the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. That whistle is your signal for the Signal Oil Program, The Whistler. the whisper, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Yes, friends, it's time for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Rated by Independent Research, the most popular West Coast program. In gasoline, you know, it takes extra quality to go farther. And Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. So look for the Signal Circle sign in yellow and black that identifies Signal service stations from Canada to Mexico. And now the Whistler's strange story. Night Melody. <laughs> Marshall was nervous. His hand shook as he dialed Helen's number on the phone in the drugstore a block away from the apartment. He realized he shouldn't be calling her now of all times. He knew he was coming back tonight, knew every step of the plan. They'd gone over it carefully a week ago, before he left for Phoenix. But even though it was dangerous, he had to call her. Had to still that terrible, unsure feeling in the pit of his stomach. And Helen reacted just as he expected. But I told you not to call me, Marshal. I had to, Helen. I had to make sure. What about the alley door? It's open. I fixed it a few minutes ago. You know what you're going to say when they call you in? Of course. You sure Mr. Prentice will be coming home at the same time? Of course, Marshal. He's as regular as clockwork. Now, don't be silly, darling. You can trust me. Everything is just waiting for you to walk in. All right, Helen. I'll be there in ten minutes. Yes, it's all waiting for you, Marshal. The side door open and ready for you. The vial of poison in your pocket. Your wife, Melody, alone in the apartment. Her sister, Helen, upstairs. Ready with her story of the strange man. But the tense, uncertain feeling is still there. Worse now as you sit in the room with Melody, talking to her, knowing what's going to happen in a matter of minutes. <laughs> My dear wandering husband. Same as ever, always doing the unexpected. Surprised? Oh, not exactly. Only one thing could have brought you home from Phoenix this way. You've come to say goodbye, haven't you? You're very direct, Melody. I... I'm sorry it didn't work out, Marshal. Who is she? I think that's beside the point. <laughs> yes, I guess it is. I suppose it's my own fault in a way. I have treated you a little like a toy. <laughs> An expensive one, of course. Let's forget that, shall we? After all, we're adults and... And there's no reason why we shouldn't part good friends. You're so right, Marshal. Always so right. Good. Let's have a drink on it, huh? All right. Scotch and soda? Of course. Whoever your new playmate is, Marshal, I hope she has money. Because you certainly won't get any of mine. I was just talking to my sister this evening. Helen? What's she got to do? I told her again that if anything happens to me, everything I have goes to her. That's all. Well, that's as it should be. <laughs> What's that, a music box? I'm going ahead with my makeup, if you don't mind. My new perfume bottle, dear. I just got it yesterday. Hmm. Clever, isn't it? Same old perfume, though, huh? <laughs> Night melody. Supposed to fit my personality, you know. Never liked it. 
Did you, dear? No. I uh, was rather surprised to find you dressed. You going somewhere? Does it matter? Well, I suppose it's none of my business now. Well, here's your drink. Let me put back the stuff. Oh, I'm oh, you sorry. made me spill it, Marshal. Why can't I you... I didn't mean to do it. I'm oh, sorry, I'm Melody. I'm show it all over my new Here, suit. Out. Uh, there you are. Phew. That's strong, isn't it? You don't like it, do you? You never liked oh, anything. please, Melody. We're good friends, remember? Here's your drink. Oh, all right. To the future, huh? To the future. Oh, oh, I've never tasted anything quite so strong. as almost... <laughs> what is it, Marshal? Marshal, have you done this? Marshal! Well, it worked, Marshal, and quickly. Yes. Thiocyanin always does. And the full vial in Melody's drink made it almost instantaneous. You bend over her, check, then straighten up and look at your watch. 1.15. Still on schedule. It takes only a moment to rinse out the two glasses, then hurry to the door, open it, and look into the hall. No one in sight, Marshal. It's perfect. One minute later, you're carrying Melody to the automatic elevator, held on the fourth floor by the little block of wood you left to prop the door open. You put her inside, let the door close, and start down the stairs. At 1.26, you're standing in the shadows of the shrubbery outside the building. At your feet, the suitcase you hid there. Waiting. Waiting. Why doesn't he come? Oh, here he comes now. Yeah, this is him. Well, hello, Mr. Prentice. Oh, uh, oh, Blake, you startled me. Sorry. Didn't know you were coming along the sidewalk. Trying to catch up with you for a block. Well, a suitcase, huh? <laughs> Back from another business trip? Yes, I'm glad of it. There you are. Oh, thanks. Rather nice to meet someone for a change. I'm usually a lone wolf, you know. I suppose it's a lot of every nightclub manager. <laughs> oh, uh, you ring for the elevator? Yep, already started down. Your wife expecting you, Blake? Why, no, I didn't get a chance to wire her. <laughs> Probably be quite a surprise. And it will be quite a surprise, won't it, Marshal? Yeah. You'll probably have to pick Prentice off the floor when that elevator door opens and he sees what's inside. But most important of all, Prentice will produce an alibi no one could possibly break down. Yes, it's so natural. You're walking up to him outside, the suitcase in your hand, just back from Phoenix, the two of you walking in together, discovering... Melody together. Yes, Marshal, it's airtight. And as the elevator dial moves around, you begin to brace yourself. Four, three, two, one. You're ready now, waiting. Prentice slides the door back. The elevator is empty. What's the matter, Blake? Step in. There's plenty of room. With the prologue of Night Melody, the Signal Oil Company is bringing you another strange tale by The Whistler. You know, the sound effects they use for radio are mighty interesting. For instance, Suppose I were to broadcast that message you see in Signal Gasoline ads. It takes extra quality to go farther, and Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. Now, if I said that through the filter mic, here's how it would sound. It takes extra quality to go farther, and Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. On the other hand, through the echo chamber, it would sound like this. 
It takes extra quality to go farther, and signal is the famous go farther gasoline. But after all, the important thing is what you say, not how you say it. And in gasoline, the important thing is that it takes extra quality to go farther. And signal is the famous go farther gasoline. You see, those quick signal starts save gasoline. That fast signal pickup and smooth knock-free signal power mean more efficient engine performance. And if a gasoline helps you enjoy more engine efficiency, it naturally helps you get more mileage. That's why Signal says just check your speedometer for the best proof of gasoline quality. You'll find it's true. In gasoline, it does take extra quality to go farther. And remember, Signal is the famous go-farther gasoline. And now back to the whistler. You stand at the door of the elevator like an idiot, too stunned to speak. It's unbelievable, isn't it, Marshall? You put Melody's body in that elevator not five minutes ago, yet the car is empty. You fight an impulse to run out of the elevator, upstairs to the fifth floor in Helen's apartment. But you can't, can you, Marshall? No one must know there was ever more than a casual friendship between you and Helen. As the car rises, you tell yourself that your wife, Melody, is dead, that she couldn't get up and walk away. Or could she? You follow Prentice out onto the fourth floor and start down the corridor, deciding now it's best to keep close to him for the time being. You seem a little rougher tonight, Blake. Anything wrong? Oh, no, no, no. I, uh, I had kind of a rough time on the plane, though, and, uh... Well, come on in, Prentice. Uh, have a nightcap with me. Won't we disturb your wife? Oh, she won't mind. Just a, a quickie. <laughs> well, you know me. <laughs> Good. Uh, I know Melody will be happy to see you. Hmm. Lights are on. Perhaps she's still up. Melody! Oh, Melody! Melody, darling. I'm home. Prentice. What's the matter? She's not here. She's not in the apartment. What's wrong with that? Why, I don't know. Oh, she might have gone out for the evening or... Wait a minute. Look there. Huh? That overnight bag next to the divan. Was she going somewhere? Well, she couldn't have... I mean, she she couldn't have gone far. Of course not. Well, Blake? What about it? What, what, what about what? <laughs> Didn't you ask me in for a drink? Oh, yes. Sure. Help yourself, will you? It's on the sideboard there. Right-o. And I'd say you could use a drink. Well, that's strange. What is it? She couldn't have left very long ago. These glasses must have been rinsed in hot water. They're still warm. Oh, yes, of course. Now, how do you suppose it... Hey, what is that? Perfume? Oh, yes, it's a favorite of my wife's. Named for her something. Night Melody. And the scent of it, heavier than ever now, makes you almost feel Melody near you. Sweet, sickening, filling the room with her presence, her brittle, mocking laugh. At long last, Prentice finishes his drink. And the minute you hear his door close across the hall, you hurry out, search the corridors on the fourth floor, then down the stairs to the third, the second, and finally into the lobby. Where is she, Marshal? What happened to Melody? Who is it? Oh, Mrs. Uh... Oh, Mr. Blake, I thought I heard someone. Is something wrong? My my wife, I'm awfully worried, Mrs. McPherson. She's not in the apartment. Well, Well, didn't you know? Know what? Well, I thought she was leaving on a trip tonight. She didn't tell me. I just got in from Phoenix. Oh, dear, dear. You must have just missed each other. I'm sure I heard Mrs. Blake go out, and I... 
Well, I'm sure of it now. That's your wife's perfume. Can't you smell it? Yes, I I do smell it. Oh, well, wait a minute. I'll check for you, Mr. Blake. I'll call the night man. He brought her trunk up from the basement this afternoon. Now I'm sure he'll know. <laughs> say she didn't mention anything to you this afternoon, Mr. Novello? Yes, I see. Well, Mr. Blake's quite worried, and he... Oh, oh, you did. You saw her leave the building short time ago. What? What did he say? The night man saw her leave. About what time, Mr. Novello? 1.30 or so? Wait a minute. What's he... Oh, and she was carrying her overnight bag. I see. Well, thank you. Yes, good night. Overnight bag? Tell me, what did he say about... But she was carrying it with her. The bag? Oh, I... now, there's nothing to worry about, Mr. Blake. Come, I'll fix you some tea. Only be a moment and I'll... That perfume, it's in here, too. Isn't that odd? <laughs> Thing. Oh, Blake. Huh? Oh, oh, Prentice. I, I'm having a little trouble with the key here. I'll get it in a minute. What's the matter? Oh, the key is locked. Yeah, let me. Oh, there you are. Thanks. Is there something wrong? No, no, nothing. Come on in, will you? I don't mean to be curious, but good Lord, man, there's nothing to get worked up about. Let me see. Where is it? Excuse me, man. Will you excuse me? Here either it's gone. What's gone? An overnight bag, Melody. It was, it was here a minute ago. Hmm. I guess that's what she came back for. What did you say? Well, I I thought it was she. Someone came and went only a minute ago. But she couldn't have. I mean, look, I, I look, Blake. There's one way to settle it. Let's go up and check with her sister, Helen. <laughs> And that's not on the program either, is it, Marshal? You're too bewildered to even think now as Mr. Prentice guides you up the stairs to the next floor in Helen's apartment. Someone knows. You're sure of it now. Someone has been in on it from the first. And the whole thing is a careful, insidious plan to trap you. But who, Marshal? Who could it be? Then as the two of you start down the sixth floor corridor... Something hits you between the eyes. Oh, don't be silly, darling. You can trust me. Everything is just waiting for you to walk in. You stop short for a minute, your mind spinning. And then continue on after Prentice. Walk in, Marshal. Walk into what? Oh, Mr. Pre What's the matter? Why are you... Oh, nothing at all, Miss Mason. I'm sorry, Helen. Marshal, something's wrong. What is it? We didn't want to disturb you, Miss Mason. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about Melody, Helen. I, uh... Well, you know, I've been in Phoenix for the past two weeks. I just returned unexpectedly and... Tell me. Tell me, Marshal, what is it? Well, she... She isn't at home. Melody isn't at home? There's really nothing to be alarmed about. You know, of course, that she planned a trip. You can't seem to convince Blake Look, here that... Look, please, Mr. Prentice, would you mind if I, uh... Talk to Helen alone. Oh, not at all. Good night, Miss Mason. Sorry to have disturbed you, but poor Blake here. Of course. Come in, Marshal, and thank you, Mr. Prentice. Not at all. What's the matter? Everything. Did you do it? Yes, right on schedule. Only one thing. What? When Prentice and I opened the elevator door, she wasn't there. What do you mean? Just that she wasn't there. Everybody's trying to tell me she's walking around the building. Oh, Marshal, are you sure she you... She was dead, I tell you. When I put her in that elevator, she was oh, dead. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Tell me now. Tell me exactly what happened. It went off perfectly. I got up to her apartment just after one. We talked a while. I suggested a farewell drink and... And then I... Go on. Wait a minute. Helen. You. What's the matter? She's been here too, hasn't she? Marshall, what are you... Night Melody. Here in this room. I can smell it. What are you talking Melody, about? Melody, Perfume? Perfume? In the Only world. one way it could have happened, Helen. Just one way. Marshall. You're double-crossing me, Helen. 
You're trying to use me for a fall guy. It's Melody's money, isn't it? That's all you're asking. Wait a minute, Marshal. What did you do with her, Helen? What did you do with Melody? The next thing I know, she'll turn up in my lap with 15 witnesses. When are you going to spring that? Darling, darling, you don't know what you're saying. I gave you credit for better sense. You're in it, you know. You're in it as deep as I am. Well, it's not going to work, Helen. You better understand that right now. Marshal, listen to me. I'm through listening to you. Oh, please. Please, darling. You've just got to believe in me before it's too late. Oh, Helen, I... I couldn't believe. Oh, my poor Could... darling. Listen to me now. I know we're in this together. There's only one way we can win. We've got to stay together. Over. I, I love you, Helen. I love you so much. If she's gone, it's because someone found her. Because someone knows. Oh, no. The manager, even Prentice. There's only one way out now, Marshal. There isn't much time. What do you mean? They do know, darling, but they don't know enough. If they did, they'd be here by now. We've got to get out of here. Where? Right now. My car's down in the basement garage. We can be out of the state by daylight. You uh, know what that means? Yes, Marshal. I know what that means. There's a sick feeling of defeat inside you as you wait for her to dress. Yes. You know what it means to run now, don't you, Marshal? From this minute on, the two of you are giving up all thought of the money, admitting to the world and the law that you murdered Melody Blake. But Helen's right. There's only one explanation. They know everything, and from now on, it's only a matter of time. Five minutes later, the two of you are in the elevator, going down to the basement and Helen's. That's it, Marshal. Get the door. Yeah. Car's over here. It's so dark, I can't... Here, take my hand. Uh, is there uh, anyone on duty? The night man's working upstairs, I think. Well, hurry, darling. What's the matter? Helen, look. On the table over there. Under the window. Wait I don't see. I, I don't understand. They brought her down here. Melody. Melody, you are dead, aren't you? You are dead. I'm afraid she is. <laughs> oh, Mr. Blake, it's awful. I had no idea when I told Please, you. Please, Mr. McPherson. Who are you? Lieutenant Brackett, homicide. This is McPherson called us. But why? What are you doing here? I don't think it's necessary to explain that. You surprised, Helen? Marshal. You're stunned, aren't you? Right out of a clear sky. You had no idea. Please, darling, believe me. That's the trouble I did believe. You should have had better sense, Helen. It won't work, you know. It's the wrong kind of a frame. There's still two of us. Stop, Marshal. Two of us, Helen, you and I. Yes, you get that, Lieutenant? Two of us. I didn't kill her. I was the machine, the dummy. She pulled the string. You don't know what you're saying. Shut up. Well, I'm pulling the strings now, all of them. All right, officer. Then make yourself comfortable. I've got quite a story to tell you. Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. But now, a message especially for you drivers who have new cars or expect to be getting one. Just any motor oil won't do, you know, for today's high-efficiency motors. No, sir. They need special protection against corrosion, wear, and carbon. If they're to give you the long, trouble-free service you have a right to expect. So Signal has brought out a finer motor oil, especially created to give modern motors this extra protection. Signal Premium Motor Oil. Of course, it has 100% pure paraffin base. But in addition, Signal Premium contains five scientific new compounds. The result? Road and laboratory tests prove that motors stay six times cleaner and cylinder wear is reduced one-third with Signal Premium Motor Oil. And that holds just as true for old motors as for new ones. So make your next oil change a change to the new signal oil that's your guarantee 
of a sweeter running motor. Signal Premium Motor Oil. And now back to the whistler. It's a terrible thing, Marshal, the four of you standing in the gloom of the basement garage. Just enough light from the street lamp outside, filtering through the dirty window to give the whole picture an ethereal, ghostly pallor. You hear yourself talking now, slowly at first, then faster as the hatred inside you drives the whole thing out of your brain and in a flood of words. You tell everything. How you fell in love with Helen. About the night you discovered you were both thinking of murder and of Melody's money. Of the poison drink, the elevator, the maddening discovery that Melody's body was gone. Helen begins to sob. Mrs. McPherson and the lieutenant just stand there quietly listening. Well, that's all, Lieutenant. I don't know what she's done to try to implicate me, what kind of a yarn she's told you, but that's the truth. And no one will ever make me change it. Oh, Marshal, why? Why? Well, what about it, officer? <clears throat> Amazing what you can run into in an apartment house garage. Come on. Where are we going? The night man's room is down here. I'd like to have you talk to him. The night man? Bring the lady, Mrs. McPherson. This way, Miss Mason. No, I won't. I'm not going You'll to. You'll do what I tell you. They're both under arrest. Suspicion of murder. But the night man, what's he got to do? Take it easy. You'll see in a minute. Oh, Flynn. Yes, Lieutenant? Can we see him now? Sure, go on in. Come on. How are you now, Mr. Novello? I I don't know, Lieutenant. I... You know Mr. Blake here? Mi Mr. Blake? Mr. Blake, please believe me. I didn't mean to do it. I tried to explain. My... After it happened, I, I got scared and I lost my head. That's why I lied about seeing your wife go out. Just and a minute, Mr. Novello. Tell Mr. Blake exactly what you did. I, I was cleaning up on the fourth floor. And I found Mrs. Blake in the elevator. She'd fainted. Fainted? Go on, Mr. Novello. I, I, I pick her up to carry her back to her apartment. And as I passed the stairway, I tripped and fell down all the way to the landing. She hit her head. I know it. I, I killed her. I, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to kill her. She, <laughs> you mean... He told you... He, Funny, isn't he, it? We thought he was lying. Had him all ready to book until you cleared him. Good Lord, I... Helen. Helen. Never mind, Marshal. It's no use now. Well, let's go, you two. Oh, Mr. Novello, a word of advice. Next time you fall downstairs with a body in your arms, don't lose your head and hide it in the air conditioning intake. Every apartment in the building is full of that perfume. Let that whistle be your signal for the signal oil program, The Whistler, each Monday at 9. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, makers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Signal has asked me to remind you to get the most driving pleasure. Drive at sensible speed. Be courteous and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly your own. <laughs> in tonight's story were Joseph Kearns and Doris Singleton. The Whistler was produced by George W. Allen with story by Joel Malone and Harold Swanton, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company.
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.